join us for the 66th annual uh, CBS show here at the Hunter Library. Well, welcome uh, to our 66th annual California Bonsai Society exhibit. And uh, come on this way. I just want to show you this uh, beautiful tree of Jim Barrett's. Uh, it's on uh, loan at the uh, Huntington Gardens. And we we're lucky enough to get this for our tokonoma display. But we have quite a few displays inside, so come on and take a look. Okay, this year is kind of a, a smaller show this year. Uh, it's only, I think there's 18 trees, but they're, they're high quality trees and uh, some of the best in uh, Southern California. So uh, take a look around. Maybe we'll bump into some of the artists that are displaying here. All right. It's Michael Roberts. I'm so glad you came. So this cork oak, for, uh, I've shown it twice now. I showed it uh, earlier on at the memorial and um, here at CBS as well. I've been training this for probably about 20 years now from you know one year old, I mean, uh, one inch nursery stock that I got, uh, but it was started from acorn by a nursery local to me. Uh, I also have a lichen stone that goes with it and a little piece of, uh, fall color down in there for us so thanks again for coming hi i'm jonathan g and this is my tree it's a chinese elm which looks like it is a root of a rock but actually it is kind of like a root in rock and the original artist who uh, made this composition uh, found a lot of uh, really select custom rocks and kind of put it to make it look like it's a fully root over rock. Uh, but I've had this tree for about uh, six years now. Uh, I almost killed it uh, a few years back uh, under some really hot spring sun. But luckily, uh, it was healthy enough and kind of regrew back. And so three years later, now I'm showing the tree. So uh, it's a really old Chinese elm. And uh, it took me a little while, it took me about three years to find a pot that I really like to go with it. Uh, a very, uh, the tree feels very uh, kind of Asian inspired, kind of Japanese Chinese uh, realm, uh, as opposed to uh, like a naturalistic deciduous tree. And so I wanted to find something that would complement it well. And so Weiger's had uh, a relationship with someone in Taiwan who's a really good uh, painted potter artist. And so I bought the ceramic uh, through them. And so to complement that, I also got an accent uh, also on rock to complement the, the tree. So yeah, that's my tree. Hello, everybody. My name is Joe Gabo. This happens to be my tree. It's an olive that I inherited from Nina Kasumi. Uh, Mel gave it to me about six years ago. And I kind of brought it back to life. I've been working on it for, like I say, six years. Each show, uh, it's improving. Starting to build more ramification. It had termited about six inches all the way around the tree. So I cut it all back. I'm just now getting a good apex. And this branch is finally popping out on me. And so it's, uh, it's coming along. This side I got pretty good built up. But this side's still a little weak. I want to get a little bit more right in here. Um, and as it was cleaning, more and more of the uh, the trunk came out and it's looking spectacular. Thank you. Go for it. My name is Peter Makashev and I specialize in Joe Bean. Uh, and this is my entry to the California Bonsai Society. Let me run to you. The very first one is Mitri uh, Gawa. And with the, with the Japanese pot, and also down here, down below, uh, Paracantha and olive, crab apple, and then Chinese elm. You know, in in putting all together, all the trees has to be talking to its other. Like this tree here should be talking to that one, and this one, as you notice, they're like this same thing as that one 
Otherwise, if you have a tree that's going the other side like that, then the composition is wrong. You know, and that's like a, when you show a tree like this, it, it makes it more difficult to do it because you have to have trees that are really talking to each other. Okay, enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Cheryl Manning, and I'm here to talk about Maribel Ballandonk, who was a very, very dear friend of mine and passed away this last February. So what we have here is a memorial display for her. But first I want to tell you a little bit about Maribel. She started Bonsai in 1965, and uh, she started taking class with John Naka in, in the early 70s. And so she was a, a longtime student and a dear friend of John's. And basically every Bonsai that she had was uh, influenced and guided in its styling and health by John. So today what we have here in her memorial display is a stone that she found at the Eel River and picked it up. It's a little hard to see it here with the lighting, but it, for her it represented uh, a dragon and we're coming into the year of the dragon but this was one of her favorite stones in a Diza made by Al Nelson. Also in this display uh, we have a cork bark pine of hers that she never displayed because she had um, in her apartment she had two little atriums and they, it was a little too shady uh, for the tree, it was in a small pot, so it was a little, a little shaggy. It wasn't in the best health, uh, but she loved her pines, and she didn't have that many bonsai, but she loved all of them. And again, John Naka was the one who uh, helped design and and guided her in her bonsai journey. And so that's what we have here in this memorial display for John and for Maribel. That's what we have, <laughs> the blooper reel. Oh. Hi, my name is Carol Upston. I'm at the California Bonsai Society show at the Huntington, and this is the tree I'm exhibiting this year. It's a olive. It's a standard kind of fruiting olive. Um, if it was not bonsai, it would have very large leaves. Uh, this tree was collected from a stump of an actual olive tree that had made many gnarly bits. And the original collection was just this dead wood and a small live branch. And I've grown this tree shape over the top.
If you guys like the uh, video, like and subscribe uh, the show for CBS 66 annual um, CBS show here. The honey will go on this weekend. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.